You're listening to another episode of Open Source CXO, the podcast designed to share insights on how to excel in your business using technology, regardless of the industry. Host Robert Kehoe is a self-taught software developer who has grown to the role of CEO. Renowned for his collaborations with organizations such as Stanford University, Nelnet, and Louis Vuitton, he continually seeks new challenges to conquer in the world of tech. Accompanying him is Don Blackburn, a veteran COO with over 25 years of experience in cultivating diverse relationships and driving innovation in various technical projects. Each week, they'll be sitting down with some of the nation's foremost technology leaders to develop an open source playbook, drawing from their firsthand experiences in the field. Let's talk some tech. So for companies that want to kind of embark on this whole AI, you know, journey, whatever, um, does the data become, come before, you have to have the data before you can train anything, right? So how, how would a company building a product, you know, we, we work with a lot of companies who build SaaS products, so they go to market with products that are brand new, and they want to integrate and incorporate AI into their product to do various things, and that's awesome, but they have no data. They have very little data, so how does that work? Yeah. So it would give, it would depend on the use case for sure. There are many, many use cases that the language models will provide solutions for, even if you don't have your specific company data. Uh, and that has been one of the learning over the last year plus. So again, the way they build these patterns and have knowledge, we are learning about how the language models can be applied to many, many use cases. And there are all kinds of really fascinating learnings coming out of that. But we're actually learning about the capabilities of language models as we go along. So depending on the use case in your hypothetical, it could be that an existing language model would work fine without the specific company's data. So like a pre-trained. Pre Absolutely, because okay. the, the patterns that are built in yeah. can be applied to that use case. Right. And there will be other cases where the company will say, that's fine and wonderful, but I want citations for all the answers, and you only know that from my data. Okay, fair enough. What's a citation? Uh, what's the source of that? You gave me an answer. Okay. Where did that right? Where gotcha. did that come from? Gotcha. Right. And so um, in some use cases, we see where people say that, I need to see where that came from. Now, by the way, I won't get too deep into AI. That doesn't mean you're going to retrain a model. There are other tools called vector knowledge graphs or a technology that we build that you would bring in your specific documents or data and be able to solve that at a far lower price point than trying gotcha. to go out and retrain a model. So you don't always have to train models. I would argue very, very rarely. Okay. Well, very rarely. One of the things that we, you know, not we, my company, we is the AI industry learned in 2023 is often if you write better prompts, you get better answers from the existing models. Because as I said earlier in 23, it seemed every week like bigger model, bigger model, bigger model, bigger model. Then we hit like April and May, it's like small, 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 small. And, and then I think as the year went on, people realized, what if we just write better prompts? Can we get more mileage out of the existing models without having to build new models? every week uh, or fine tune models. Can you talk a little bit about what a prompt is? To, uh, I think it, people Let's, who are familiar uh, with ChatGPT kind of understand that concept, but. Except prompt engineers is a, is a, that's a whole, yeah. that's a whole role that just yeah. popped up here. And to me, it just yes. popped up recently. I don't yes. know how, how recent it is, but it was like a prompt engineer. We're creating a whole new category here? We a are. new role? We are. And it, it's a very important role very lucrative and maybe very short lived. So, let, so let's talk about prompting and you two went exactly to the right place. It's a very important place because I would argue most enterprises do not understand prompting. Okay. And the reason they don't understand it is because of chat GPT. So let, let's yeah. talk about that. Um, I often get asked, isn't this blockchain all over again? <laughs> and I was like, no, this is not blockchain. This is real. Right. I, I could give several reasons, but here's one and the most important reason. Your CEO and your board members have played around with ChatGPT. They think they've got it. They may or may not got it. That's you, for you to deal with at your company. Right. But that blinding speed of response creates a visceral impact like, oh, this is amazing. I understand. Now I get this AI stuff. As I just said, they may not get it. They may not understand it, right. but they think they've got it. And that's one reason we're seeing such, you know, being driven um, 
executives being driven by their board CEO. Where, where, where's this on the roadmap? What are we doing here? I've seen this. So that creates a, oh, I understand prompting. And you do. That's a consumer level prompting. Let's switch over to enterprise level prompting. Something that would work in a business on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Something that would work in a heavily regulated business. Those type of consumer level prompts are not appropriate and will not work because you have to have the same answer every time. You have to rigorously think that through. You have to test it. You have to look at edge cases and corner cases. You have to test failure. That sounds like an IT project, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> um, and so that's where I think also enterprises are getting confused. They're like, oh, yeah, prom I got it. I know how to prompt. I would argue maybe you don't know how to do enterprise prompting, which is really different from consumer-grade prompting. And so to your question, will the prompt engineering is basically to denote there is a level of sophistication, a level of effort, a level of testing, a level of retesting before an enterprise would be comfortable with a prompt that could be used consistently. Yeah. Can you give me an example of a, a prompt? Yeah. So if you looked at um, medical record prompting and some of the things we would do, we could ask a very short prompt for a data point. Mm -hmm. But if you said a medical record summary, we might write far larger prompts to be very specific. And then what's most important is, again, if you're going to cut this loose across your enterprise, you test this repeatedly with multiple batches of data and documents. You test looking at mistakes when it didn't return the right answer. Why did the model respond that way? Let's understand that. So it just goes again back to prompt engineering. It's that process of, in English, interrogating, but making very sure you're consistently getting the correct answer for your business. So is that kind of, <clears throat> there's been a lot of a lot of press, a lot of media around Gemini lately and the problems they've had returning information. <laughs> you know, when prompted with certain questions, returning uh, answers that were, you know, a little yeah. controversial, we'll say. Uh, is that just bad data in or it's the prompting? Yeah. So in that case, it may be neither. <laughs> so Gemini is really, really interesting. And because of my past career and also I've worked on the vendor side, I have sympathy for anyone demonstrating software. As an executive, I probably received a thousand different demonstrations of software of which I, I came away with one epiphany. Don't ever demonstrate software live. <laughs> uh, you should really go with a video or something, but, but anyhow, right. so, so I do have sympathy. Uh, I want to be very clear about that. And I respect the heck out of Google. Having said Didn't that- they try to do something live? And it, they, well, no, they, they did not. They oh, made okay. a very keen, short video. They took my advice, okay? However, what they said the video was and how it was put together seemed to have some variance. Okay. So they implied all these multi-modes are all coming in. As people looked at it more closely, they like, wait a minute, somebody's typing all the questions in. That's okay. That's fine. If they'd been a little more open about it up front, not conveying that it was coming in in different modes. So, so that's one thing where I think they got some criticism and they retreated. And then more recently, uh, there are questions being asked and answers are being provided that we know are not correct and they know are not correct. And I think what is going on there is you have people attempting to put in guidelines or to put in structures over the top of the model. Um, I do not believe there's any data that would support some of the prompt answers that I saw over this past weekend. I, I don't think there's any data on this planet that would support that. Uh, I think with best intentions, they're like, well, let's build in some guidelines. Let's build in some of our beliefs and principles and things just get off base. And again, that's why I would go back to, I think as companies think about all of this AI and technology, it's so important on what was the training? What are guidelines that people are doing? What are, or how are these models trained? 
and importantly, how are the prompts written and rigorously testing them for, for output and making sure your com company's comfortable with that. So there's a certain amount of human intervention there that are causing these, that, 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 putting the guidelines around the data that's re being returned. That's what I believe based on what I saw this weekend. I, I saw a series of prompts and outputs and I, again, my conclusion was there's no data source on earth that's coming up. Exactly. That. Some, somebody right. is with best intentions trying to put their own input in and it's creating things that are just yeah, causing it seems like it an absolutely people. massive problem. Data that, bias just oh, based on somebody's beliefs or, or how they feel about something. I so mean, they can still manipulate the return, <laughs> the data that's coming back. So then it's not. It's not to me well, that again, true. it would not be appropriate, in my opinion, for an enterprise. If you want to play around and experiment and entertain your kids, I don't know, that might be fine. But if we're trying to solve problems for a business, that's different because, you know, I often say generative AI is to sound right. What we have to do with enterprise AI is we have to be right. Can't sound right, it's got to be right. Those are different things. Yeah, 100%, actually. So I'm guessing as a company, you've got to take steps to make sure there is no bias being interjected into the... Or wrong data. I mean, you know, I just, I could see that being sort of, you, you start training models on, on, on data that's kind of inaccurate, you're going to get, it might be... Bad data out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we focus on what we call extractive AI in many sense, that we work with companies to put in specific documents and data. And once again, our language models are more business trained and narrow. So us getting the right answer is really important to us and to the people we work with. Uh, and again, we're not trying to just sound right or be something that my kids would find entertaining when we're on a trip. So it's a very different mindset and approach. I think both have value. Just know what problem you're solving. Is it entertaining kids at the airport? Or know what problem you're solving. Is it this data has to be correct so I can make a decision on it? Sure. And then, and then you can map the right AI solution to the right business problem. So what verticals are you in so far? We're in well, healthcare, obviously, and, and healthcare insurance. And insurance. So I think because we lean forward on, you know, human in the loop, we lean forward on risk reduction, we lean forward on business language models. It's not surprising that uh, heavily regulated industries get comfortable with us relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are some other companies that have gone down the path. It's all a black box. You'll never understand this and types of things that rightly so heavily regulated industries are like, that makes me really uncomfortable and it should. Mm -hmm. So what's, how easy is, is it to implement your solution? For example, look, I'll give you a, an, an idea here. Look, a, an insurance company has a CRM that their agents are using to sell different policies and so forth. Is it something they could easily integrate a CRM into using your service and and improve how things are, are being handled? Yeah. So in this world, uh, and including my entire technology background, I don't think I can say anything is easy <laughs> uh, because the, the gods would strike me down uh, and find that is unlikely. I would argue we're relatively easy in the following regards. Because of the models that we've trained, we really try to do zero-shot training. That is, you can bring your information to us. Again, go through the prompt testing and regimen we talked about. Go through that discipline, but then get to work. We do not say, well, we're going to have to build a separate LLM for you, or you're going to have to fine-tune an LLM, things like that. So in that sense, it's relatively easy. But people have to know their documents. They have to know their data. They have to know what's an acceptable outcome. They have to put some effort into that. They have to understand our past discussion that consumer-level prompting and enterprise-level prompting are two different things. And who's going to really lead that and do that? And do they understand the difference and are people willing to put the time in? Gotcha. The other thing is because we are solely an API we are easy in that sense that our models are exposed. And in your example, like a CRM or another product could quickly just leverage the capabilities they want from mm -hmm. us. Right. But like we said earlier, when we talked about the different, I think we're going through prompt engineering. Sounds like an IT project. 
It is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so right. don't throw caution to the wind uh, and think it's just magic beans and pixie dust. It, it is uh, effort and work. We do think to the amount of investment that we've already made that it's relatively, you know, uh, lower on the effort of different options that you might have. So would one interact with the API sort of like in a, a natural language sort of way? Would you, would somebody literally just write, generate this report for this date for you know, whatever, whatever the prompt might be? Is that how one would interact with your guys' API or is it a little bit different than that? Well, so we're solely API. So it can be how you want to integrate into your product. So at some level, somebody will write a prompt exactly as you described. Now, in your CRM example, or many of the large companies we'd work with, they don't want 100 people there writing prompts, right? right? So you want to test, test, get the enterprise prompt right, feel comfortable with it, and then you may feed into a BPM system or a workflow orchestration or an existing claim system or an existing CRM so that the person, in many use cases, isn't even aware that they're using a large language model or a small language model behind the scenes. They're right. just doing their job. Exactly. Uh, and that's how I think this has to progress. Prompting is just really, really critical at the enterprise level to get it right. Mm -hmm. But once you get it right, you should not have 200 people across your enterprise prompting. Right. Uh, and that's the other area I think people get really confused about prompting. At all levels and all jobs, we're going to have to understand at least what I'm terming consumer-grade prompting, mm -hmm. just like people understand how to do Google searches. But enterprise-scale prompting built into a corporation's workflow that will involve decision-making, adjudication, you know, all of those things, that's very different in companies I think are going to uh, develop very clear policies and have governance for those level processes. And again, most of the day-to-day -day execution of those should be behind the scenes. Uh -huh. So given a crystal ball, what's next? I mean, you've, you've been immersed in this AI yeah. technology for a while now. What do you, what do you think's coming over the next year, two years? Is there, is it pretty clear roadmap now or is it just i see wild? a lot of regulations coming That's what I, <laughs> I i would imagine but is it the wild west right now and who knows what's going to come out of this or do we have a pretty good idea how this is going to progress uh i think there's a lot of lack of clarity and i want to come back to regulation in a moment some of the lack of clarity are uh, you know hypothetically or in quotes people in this space so I'm sure you all saw this over a year ago. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of companies started slapping AI onto the name of their company or, yeah. G or GPT onto the name of the product. Yeah. Like that doesn't really make you an AI company. You know, I'm, right. I'm uh, you know, ABC AI, I'm worth a billion dollars. It's like, no, probably you aren't actually, but nice try. Yeah. Uh, so we see that and it creates a lot of confusion. The things that we talked about, you know, we've mentioned some really great technology companies this morning, really legit, and, and maybe they've had some stumbles on the way too. I see uh, investors throwing money into AI companies. They have no clue what it is they're investing in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I observed this, especially in my last role was a CIO advisor, and I'd go through the industry and talk to a lot of people, and it was quite fascinating to me. So to answer your question, there's still a lot of uncertainty, lack of clarity, driven partially by the amount of money being thrown into the sector uh, and just general confusion. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I try not to be pedantic, but a couple of times I went back to discussions today of definition to make sure are we clear because there's tremendous confusion. Mm -hmm. I do not think it's crystal clear who the winners will be. You know, some people have said, oh, clearly, now, OpenAI is going to be the winner. And look at Microsoft. I think it's too early to tell. Yeah. I think that winners will emerge over time. So I think there's lack of clarity at that level. Where there is more clarity is I do think in 24, we're seeing people understand some of the things we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So this is what I could use a language model for to solve my problem. This prompt engineering stuff, I better understand that. It may not be the same thing I'm just playing around with my kids with if I want right. to bring it into my business. So I do think there is emerging understanding there, but we're still in pretty early days. The regulatory environment is very interesting. 
at the federal level, I'll bet there's 25 different agencies working on AI regulation. Well, the first thing they're going to have to do is come up with a definition of what is AI. Mm -hmm. Uh, And commonly when I talk to people, I find, oh, yeah, AI is very scary. It's got to be regulated on and on. And so I say, okay. So right now, today, in fact, in the Kansas City Metro, oncologists are using AI for cancer. So we're going to stop them, right? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Uh, Okay. I used to be a CISO. In cybersecurity products, we saw AI in action. So we're going to take that away, right? No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Okay. My oldest son now works part-time at McDonald's. Human, but there's AI. And you want to talk about technology and human in the loop. You see it at your McDonald's. You may not see it. You may be swearing at something. You think, <laughs> is there the machine? It's actually the human. Or or you may be very pleasant. Yet it's actually the machine. But, that, but that's okay. So, But anyhow... To continue on this theme, we're going to take AI away from McDonald's, right? No, 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 we're not going to do Okay, so what is it we're going to regulate? Right. And often it's, well, I want all that bad stuff. I, I want all that biased. Okay, sure. fair. Humans aren't biased? How, how did these, you know, some of these models where bias has crept in or where certain groups haven't been, how did that happen if you're out crawling on the web? That came from humans producing that content. So the point is, I'm not saying that there won't be federal legislation. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's a whole bunch of acronyms running around trying to define it. And then when you start getting into specifics on what is it we're going to regulate or stop, people diverge even more. Yeah. So it may be a while. Um, last year, I was talking to a lobbyist. They don't like being called lobbyists, by the way. They want to call policy advisory firm. But anyhow, I was, I was speaking to some lobbyists, and they predicted by the end of this year some type of federal legislation will emerge. That that could be right. But let's say that's right. There's another nine months of AI going down the road very quickly. And again, I don't think it's so clear on what it is that we're regulating. Now, that's federal. At the state level, you see some states already Uh, passion regulation and legislation some of it is in draft language that does concern me a bit and and the concern is i don't think these people understand anything about ai i you know so that's always a little concerning uh and then there are other states starting to move ahead already so i do think that regulation will evolve and emerge i just think it could be very uneven and i think as people rigorously think about what is it we want to regulate and how do we just regulate the quote unquote bad stuff uh, while retaining the benefits is going to be more challenging than people think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Totally Appreciate you doing pleasure. this. My pleasure. Totally my pleasure.